G'day comrade subscribers, thanks for hanging around. Scratching through my stuff and I realised I haven't done anything on the Raton 9003 for a while um, from Belarus. Uh, it's not working, it's got the same ULA uh, as the uh, Moldovan Byte. So I had pretty low opinion that I could <laughs> I was able to do anything. Not that I'm very good at troubleshooting spectrums anyway. Um, I don't know if you want to know the temperature. It's uh, actually sunshine outside today. It's uh, about 25 degrees. Stop raining. There's lots of rain overnight. Whoops. Uh, but it's uh, blue skies now. So the Raton from Belarus. Um... 1992 stamped on it. That's uh, we can. So this is actually part three video. I've actually done two videos on this one already, but um, I guess we can have a quick catch up because it's been a while. So the cable, I think this is the block Britannia, the uh, power supply, uh, five volts output. <laughs> so pretty pretty beefy. Um, I think I repaired it. I think I don't think it was working. I did. I don't know. I don't think it was a difficult repair. So that's the block Britannia, and um, this is the power cable. So it's hardwired in. I'm not a fan of that. I think I I said in my last video that I was considering just replacing this with a 2.1 mil socket. Um, because, you know, this is a bit overkill for 5 volts input. But you can see here, Britannia. Yeah, we'll go over the ports. Britannia, we've got an interface. We've got the J and joystick. Joystick, RGB. Then we've got another interface expansion there. And then we have the good old magnetophone cassette input. So, yeah, I could, or I could even put a DIN socket there keeping with these and then just make up a din a simple usb to din but i'll keep it as is for now um rgb cable made up before luckily i labeled it so i remembered so um yeah we can have a quick look at what it does and then we can um we can open it up let me get it set up get plugged into the big power supply block Britannia and start recording the screen on my other phone and power on and that's what we get so not it's not, not very stable either So we'll open it up. This is where I kind of put my hands up in the air because it's basically a ULA. It's like, oh, well, if the ULA is screwed, then well, there's not much I can do. But I've got, um, I might try a test, test ROM as well. Okay, let's open her up. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, unplug it, unplug it. Bloody elephants. Okay. Got flatheads as usual. Let me Unscrew these and we'll have a look. Okay. Don't lose the screws. Okay. There we go. Very pretty. Oh, nice. <laughs> we've got the uh, we've got the ceramic T thirty four VM one. 
me just pick up this screw, which is the original um, development code name sort of thing for the uh, for this uh, for their Z80. And look at the nice beastie rectifier, a uh, regular uh, rectifier, yeah, re rectifier, got a regulator there. So actually, we're not putting in five volts, and we must be putting in nine volts or something. There we go. I don't know why we've got two ROM spots. It's a T34 ROM as well. T34 RE1. Okay, and there's the ULA. I'm very careful of that. So one of the ULA pins is lifted. Taken over there by that wire. Oh, I don't want to fiddle with it too much, obviously. Have a closer look. What's the best way to do this? So I think I've probably gone through all this um, quite a few months ago when I first opened her up. So there we go. We've got our T34 VM1. Nice ceramic um, version. Gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. So that's the, uh, the Soviet Z80. There's our little ULA that causes all the problems. Well, I don't know. The KA1515 um, X, well, it's not X, I know, it's uh, XM01. So that particular pin is lifted up. So I'm not sure what that is. I, have to, I do have the pin out for this. Okay, we've got a T34 ROM. I'd say that would be the ROM. Right there. What else is of interest? Nice juicy rectifier there. Some good old Soviet capacitors. 5 volt regulator, KREN5V. Um, yeah. So um, it's not too bad. We've got our Space Invader, Space Invader capacitors. So capacitors installed upside down. <laughs> um, yeah, as well. There's our memory. Not socketed, of course, <laughs> but it's all got decoupling capacitors. Actually, what's that little... Hmm, what's that mess in there? Don't know. All right, so I'll try pulling that ROM out. I assume it's the ROM, T34 RE1. And put in the test one, see what it does. <laughs> Powered on and off. I do get a stable image there now. Off. We'll go back to that. Power off. Power on while there still might be charge. Let me get that. All right. So maybe some research is required. <laughs> ah, spectrums. This is holding down the space bar as I start up. Interesting effects. All right, I'll put the original ROM back in. Actually, was it one of the things, if that's... Let me just try running it with no ROM. Lose the screws. So that's no ROM. <laughs> Very similar. <laughs> okay, of course it could be the RAM if there's nothing. With... Power on. Power off, power on. I know I'm not supposed to um, power on quickly, but I'm just trying to do it so that the maybe there's a little bit of charge left in the RAM. All right, some interesting effects. All right, I'll uh, continue thinking. Sometimes you just got to stop and restart. All right, there we go. Work to be done.